What's up everyone? So today we're going to uh, install my Lambda controller. Uh, it's called the Cam Lambda from Link. And it's pretty cool. Uh, it just uses a couple connectors um, and connects directly to the board. And you can control and monitor your uh, wideband, the AFRs. So we're gonna go ahead and start getting that installed. So the Cam Lambda comes with a couple things. Um, I have most of the stuff inside and I'll show you that stuff later. Uh, the first thing is the Cam Lambda itself. It's very similar to their uh, their map sensor, um, but it has a plug for a Bosch 4.9 map sensor, and then the switch connector. Uh, so first order of business is figuring out where to mount the sensor so that we can still plug it in. I think I have the, the perfect place. So the cable on the O2 sensor is a little short, but I was able to get it down in there, snake it past the uh, old cooler, and run it into the cabin right here. So I'm just gonna drill a hole and mount it like here, or right here, or whatever. Um, and should we get to go right there. I might be able to use these holes. I actually think I can use these holes right there. Let's see. All right, I got that one mounted. I'm gonna throw another boat through here. Don't worry. Uh, I'm just running on a light, so I want to get this done as quickly as possible. But that works pretty good. I'm gonna probably throw a grommet in here just to. Make sure that doesn't rub up against anything. But we're gonna go into the back and finish mounting the map sensor because that's done unmounted. that mounts up in there I think that looks pretty good oh it's put pretty blurry too but anyway it looks pretty good in there uh, so let's go figure out the wiring for this uh, can lambda all right I'm wiring up the cam lambda now can lambda I went ahead and made this little harness a uh, little like uh, can communication port whatever that they had on there was stupid so I cut it off uh, you actually only need two wires uh, for this as far as I can tell from the wiring diagram, which is the can, high and can, can low and can high. I went ahead and ran those to the storage connector that they include. Uh, and then I'm going to run all this back to the trunk where the ACU is. Um, and then I need to make another little harness uh, for a relay for power and ground. That's going to go to a switch power that I'm going to use up here. Um, so I'm going to do that now, but I'm just going to run this and make sure this is long enough so I can see exactly how long I need to run the power and ground wires that do have to go into this connector. So we're going to get to work on that now. Alright, so I have everything sloppily. Uh, well, it's all together, but it's just kind of chilling sloppily right now. It's the connector around there. Branch of the harness into the trunk. I have this stuff it's running up under the dash. There's accessory power. All this mess. It needs to super be cleaned up, uh, but I don't want to like run it and tuck it and then it'd be wrong. I mean, this is a fuel pump relay, but anyway, I don't want to run and tuck it and be wrong and then have to untuck it and do it all over again. So for test sake, it's just going to be like this. Uh, so let's go ahead and give the car power and let's try and make sure that uh, we uh, got this assembled correctly. So I screwed up, which is uh, not uncommon. Uh, basically, uh, when I was wiring up the can lambda, I neglected to see that there was need for a resistor, 120 amp or amp, 120 ohm resistor. I don't have any resistors, so I had to go buy one. Well, no 
uh, electronic supply stores or micro center or anything have those resistors. So I had to order it online. So I was either tasked with uh, order one for six cents, which is what they cost, and pay eight dollars for shipping, or order it on Amazon for five bucks prime. So that's what I did. So that should be here in two days. Um, I'm waiting on a couple other parts. So can't hook up the can lambda. Waiting for coil plug, or uh, not coil plug. Waiting for a couple of uh, other parts before I can start the car again. So. Yeah, we don't have much to do. Um, there's some buttoning up that I want to do and I want to run a couple switches for some inputs uh, for little stuff like launch and trouble, which I'm never going to use. It's literally just going to be to uh, make flames. <laughs> uh, and yeah, we're going to wire up a switch for that. Um, I have to figure out how to make like a switch panel for it. Um, I also got some fire sleeve that I need to run on two of the AN lines um, that I have near the manifold because you don't want those to catch on fire so uh, there's also a couple of others like dumb things that I need to do today so we're gonna go ahead and button those things up and uh, yeah get it moving so I forgot to say that I ran the harness uh, loomed it up real good ran all the way through back here and I'm gonna start running all my inputs starting with some switches all right, since it's not possible for me to not do anything, uh, I just kind of went through the engine bay and started cleaning out wiring and removing things. I'm getting a cap for the distributor, so I went ahead and pulled the cap off and then the uh, the stock bracket that you use to pull out the engine, I still have it, I'm not gonna get rid of it, obviously. Uh, but I just pulled that off because I want to start cleaning out vacuum lines and just getting rid of unnecessary stuff. I'm probably gonna tuck most of this harness under the trans, so it's kind of out of the way. I'm getting the, uh, one of my things about this car it's, it's always just been a messy ass engine bay and I'm really sick of it uh, started to install the fire sleeve now since I'm stupid and did not uh, get this sleeving before I assembled the lines uh, I had to cut it and then uh, just wrap it ran out of zip ties so uh, hopefully this is okay I got another one obviously for that line I'm just gonna run up this far and it should be fine um, Sorry, sorry, I terminated like some switches. I know it's gonna be hard to see in here. No, this is why for some switches I'm gonna be running. Uh, this is the loom uh, for the expansion harness. I kind of finished, ran it through here. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how I'm gonna run all this stuff yet, uh, but it is gonna be nice and tucked and out of the way. Um, so I think that now that since I'm gonna be ordering our or my injectors and doing the fuel rail kit uh, and the valve cover area is going to be freed up i'm just going to pull the valve cover off now I'm sick of looking at the terrible wrinkle black paint i'm going to paint it a nice blue i'll uh, probably do that tomorrow since i have nothing to do i'm just trying to occupy myself uh, and keep making contact for you guys um while i have my wedding on, on these parts to get here so i'm going to do that stuff tomorrow and uh like the the valve cover i mean uh, and then finish up this stuff. It's supposed to rain, so doing the valve cover will be good if it does rain. Um, but yeah, other than that, we're gonna get all stuff done, hopefully by the end of the week. And then we'll be moving on to the next thing. So it's foggy as hell, but that's not gonna stop me. We gotta get this valve cover pulled off so that we can paint it. So let's get it to work. So we got the uh, cover off, it started raining, so I couldn't really film, but I got it off. Um, I went with this color, I'm not sh sure how well this is gonna be seen, it's like a navy blue. It's kinda dark, I thought navy blue was light, but it's a little dark, and I like it. Uh, I was gonna go with like something metallic, but it cost too much money, and I spent all that money. Uh, I haven't really decided how I wanna do this. 
Uh, I was thinking about repainting the Toyota letters, Toyota letters black and just leaving them, but I think I'm just gonna make this entire thing just this color because I'm a little lazy. So uh, I'm gonna start taping this thing up and then use this stripper. I'm familiar with like the aircraft remover. I'm familiar with the aircraft remover stuff because that works that works really well, but they didn't have this, Home Depot or Lowe's. So I'm gonna try this, hopefully it works. If not, I'm gonna be upset. I <laughs> have to start this project over uh, and go get the right stuff. But anyway, let's see what we can do. So I wasn't able to film very well, but got everything off. That's just like old dirt. I got just in there that I just can't get off. Most of this stuff off, just gonna finish cleaning it up. Wipe it down with some alcohol. Uh, well, first I'll give it a little sand, wipe it down with some alcohol, and then we're good to go. All right, got everything taped up. This is nothing uh, that isn't easy to do. I'm sure I'm not gonna like do a comprehensive guide on how to do this. There's, there's tons on the internet. Uh, but you guys get the general this. Just I'm gonna go ahead and paint this, uh, and then show you guys the result. All right, so that's it. It's on like the last coat. I let that dry and then cure. It ain't perfect, but I ain't a professional, so we'll put this back on once it's done. So we're kind of in that period of time where you're just waiting on parts and there's not much to do, which is really unfortunate because uh, there's a lot that I could be doing. Uh, my injectors are on the way. Uh, I got in line for my fuel rail, but I don't want to put the fuel rail on until I get the coil and plug harness, which is on the way, courtesy of Chico Raceworks. Um, because I want to run the car on the 550, 550cc injectors and the coil and plug, I just want to keep the changes as small as possible. Um, and my can lambda isn't working. I think I have a solution for that today. I'm gonna try and figure that out. Uh, hopefully that works. If not, that's another dead end uh, to figure out how to work. So <clears throat> we're just kind of trying to button things up. I uh, I've been taking. I, I finished wiring up the switches and I got those to work. I'm sorry I didn't film that, but uh, it was a new process for me. So I just kind of wanted to take my time and get it right. So I got the switches wired up. They're not mounted anywhere. Um, but I did order uh, a nice plate that goes and replaces the uh, stock cluster uh, so that I can put my tablet there. Now I'm trying to figure out how to make my fuel level sensor work with the uh, like that link, just make it work. So I tried to wire it into the link and I had some issues with that so I'm researching that and I'm trying to figure that out. Uh, but since that's not working, can't do it. Um, so. Today we're just gonna try and uh, fix the can lambda. It seems that it's snowing, even though it's not supposed to snow till tomorrow. So that's a thing. Uh, and I'm gonna go through uh, wiring in the engine bay. I'm just try and clean things up more. I wanna get things out of the way, get things tucked up, uh, so that it just looks cleaner in there, but it's still serviceable. So I'm gonna go ahead and work on that now. All right, so I rewired the can lambda. Please excuse the uh, shoddy wiring. This is literally for testing purposes as I was trying out multiple things, trying to troubleshoot, uh, make sure that uh, it was correct. So this is obviously gonna be cleaned up when I'm done. But I actually figured out the issue. The relay this is con like connecting to uh, is not functional. So it's gonna need to get a new relay. Uh, and then hopefully once I get a new relay, this will be able to get power and we'll be able to uh, uh, get this thing hooked up. That's not gonna be today. Um, I do have a couple other things to do. And it's pretty cold and I don't want to sit out here for this. So I'm going to work on the other things that I have to do. Uh, so I can wear my gloves. I can't wear my gloves on my fingers wires. But the other things that I want to do, I can't wear my gloves. So let's get those things done. So it's much better in the engine bay now. Uh, still looks like crap because there's a bunch of bags and stuff. Just kind of like protecting and uh, keeping stuff safe. Um, but yeah, got the valve cover back on, started putting things together, started tucking stuff over there. I tuck this back down there. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, it's getting coming together. Once we get the other harnesses that we need, uh, we should be done with all this and we can get ready to tune. Uh, the can lambda, like I said, uh, I need to get a different relay for that. So I'll get the relay tomorrow and then uh, we'll get that working, hopefully. Um, yeah, the list to be, being able to tune is slowly, slowly uh, getting shorter. So, yeah, we're going to do this stuff. We're, I hope to, like, have the majority of this stuff finished up this week. Just waiting for the harness from Chico Raceworks to the coils. 
uh, as well as some other goodies I'll show you guys about. Chico Raceworks. Chico Raceworks makes great stuff, and if you haven't heard about them, you're sure enough. Uh, you definitely need to hit, hit them up and get some uh, some stuff. It's a lot of cool stuff, and you'll be seeing a lot of their parts on my car. Uh, but anyway, thank you guys for watching this video. I know it's kind of kind of all over the place. Uh, what I like to do with these videos is have a goal, but uh, as you know, if you're building a car. Sometimes things don't work out and things get messed up and you got to wait for stuff. So I want to be real with you guys and instead of not putting out a video, I figured I'd put out something. So uh, yeah, uh, thank you guys for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you think. Uh, if you have any questions about the Link ECU, just let me know. I can answer them as best I can. Uh, just a couple more things to do to go uh, and we'll be able to tune this car. So anyway, thanks guys for watching again. Have a good day. Peace.